don't forget to say thank you. <laughs> I heard it once. I heard it a thousand times from my mom when I was growing up. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. Good old mom. Don't forget to say thank you over and over again. Don't you hate it when you have to say thanks for stuff you don't want? <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're a little kid. Yeah. I didn't want to thank Aunt Gladys for the six pairs of socks I got for my birthday. <laughs> I didn't want to thank Granny for the cute little Christmas slippers with a little reindeer on top. <laughs> yeah, 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 after years of that, I, I didn't want to thank anybody for anything anymore. <laughs> well, I wish I would have remembered that advice later on. 1979, I was 25 years old. My father dies of a sudden heart attack. Mom calls me on the phone and she says, Your dad's gone. Just like that. I knew what she meant. And after reflecting on that for a bit, I I realized that I hadn't thanked my dad for anything in years. What would I have thanked him for? Well, I don't recall ever learning the mysteries of life from him. <laughs> he didn't pass along any unforgettable words of wisdom that I can recall. But I would have thanked him all the times he played catch with me. Even though I know he didn't really want to. <laughs> that was important. And I would have thanked him again for the time he, he fixed up and repainted my brother's old bike before giving it to me for my birthday. <laughs> that meant a lot. <laughs> but if nothing else, I would have thanked him for just being there. So I finally learned mom's lesson. Now mom lived until she was 85 years old. The last few years of her life, she lived a few hundred miles off the coast. So I'd call her on the phone every week or two, and we'd chit-chat about this and that. Sometimes the, the talk would go towards politics or the state of the world. And she'd get depressed. <laughs> yeah. Whenever that happened, I'd always come back with something like, well, mom, you sure raised a good bunch of kids, didn't you? <laughs> and she'd laugh and say, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was so grateful that I could thank her in that way many times over the last few years of her life. So is there someone in your life that influenced you in some way that you would love to thank, but you never did? You know, it might not be too late. Last year, I was in Las Vegas attending an adult baseball camp. And one night they had a banquet. And the keynote speaker was Maury Wills. Maury Wills played shortstop for the Los Angeles Dodgers when I was 10 years old growing up over there in North Hollywood. And I loved the Dodgers. And Maury Wills was my favorite player. He was short, he was skinny, he was spry just like I was back then. <laughs> and I loved baseball so much that I would neglect some of the important parts of my life, like school. <laughs> I hated school. I hated reading books, especially the books that had lots of words, <laughs> not many pictures. I like comic books, like, like Superman and, and Batman. And, the Green Hornet, Green Hornet. And one day, a friend of mine named Bob bought a book to school about this thing. The title of the book was, It Pays to Steal. Mm. Not the usual title you see brought to a Catholic school. <laughs> <laughs> but the book was the autobiography of Maury Wills. The title had to do with his skill at stealing bases. And even though I hated to read books, hated it, this one was written by my hero. I had to read this book. <laughs> and I did. And it was a 
great book. It was a terrific story. He talked about growing up in Washington, D.C., playing in the streets in his bare feet, using flattened paint cans as bases, how he got drafted by the Brooklyn Dodgers, spent eight years in the minors before being brought up to the majors in 1959 and coming out here to Los Angeles. It was a wonderful story, a great book. But the result of all that was books weren't so bad. <laughs> I could read a book, and it was fun. I even got a library card, started going to the library, checking books out, started learning things. That, reading that book changed my life. So fast forward 45 years later, I'm in Las Vegas, there's Morty Wills up on stage talking baseball. And when he was done, there was a question and answer period. My hand shot into the air. He called on me, I stood up and I said, Mr. Wills, I, I couldn't, couldn't call Maury. <laughs> I said, Mr. Wills, I don't have a question for you. I wanted to thank you for something you did for me a long time ago. I proceeded to tell him and the whole audience the story about me reading his book, how it changed my life. And when I was done, you should have seen the look on his face. I am certain that no one has ever thanked him for something like that. So perhaps in your life, there's a brother, sister, an old teacher, an aunt, an uncle, a boss, maybe even a baseball player that would love to hear from you. Can you imagine how thrilled they would be to hear a thanks from you? If you did that, you wouldn't just make their day. You might just make their life. So do what mom says. Don't forget to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.